Hello everyone and welcome to our short reflection on today's readings from Scripture as part of Trinity Sunday. The Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 begins with the words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. There is a story told of Rabbi Hillel, who was once challenged by a young man to recite the whole of the Torah, standing on one leg. If the rabbi could do this, then the young man would convert to Judaism. The rabbi accepted the challenge. He stood on one leg and said, What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbour. This is the whole of the Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and study it. The same could also be said for the opening verse of today's Gospel. A simple, short sentence, yet remarkably poignant and profound. Words which, like no other, encapsulate not only the meaning of John's Gospel, but the whole of the New Testament itself. And these words are given to us today on the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. As a pupil at school, I vividly recall the, the puzzle of the Trinity being explained to me in various ways and at various times. The shamrock, three leaves, one source. On another occasion, it would be the equilateral triangle enclosed within the circle. And I recall to John Wesley's remark, tell me how it is in this room there are three candles, but one light, and I will explain to you the mode of divine existence. These, of course, are all attempts, human attempts, indeed laudable attempts, to draw down into the very essence of Godhead. So is the Trinity really just a numbers game set to challenge, bemuddle and confuse, a piece of mathematical jiggery-pokery? Despite nearly two millennia of theological and spiritual reflection, our human language, beautiful as it often is, cannot really articulate something which is beyond our comprehension. The ineffable cannot be contained in a catchphrase, and the doctrine of the Trinity remains a dauntingly inscrutable abstract concept. Nevertheless, this is a teaching that has been celebrated in the Western Church since the Middle Ages, and one that has, perhaps surprisingly, been a frequent subject of Christian mystical experience, from Julian of Norwich to, as seen here in our slide, Teresa of Avila. Trinity is the distinctively Christian understanding of God, the origin of all things. And that's why it's so important for us to find some way of talking that does not reduce three persons to three aspects of a single entity, and yet doesn't leave us with the confusion of three separate gods either. This name we give to God, the Most Holy Trinity, marks the depth and height of the Christian knowledge and experience of who God is. And in the end, our words and concepts crumble when we speak of God. We're left with images to guide our understanding in the direction that it needs to go. Three suns, one light, one ray of light refracted into three colours, three notes forming a single harmony. These give us hints and glimpses of how it can be that the reality behind all things begins and ends in love. The Trinity is in fact a relationship of love and we are invited to share in that relationship by being welcomed into it. The Jesuit priest, James Hanley, says that far too often our experience of God and our understanding of God as Trinity is dismissed simply as a mystery or presented as some sort of paradox or conundrum. Three persons, one God. What we have to remember, says Hanley, is that our language must be humble it must be partial, 
and it must be inadequate. If it were not, then it could not speak truthfully of the reality of God, who cannot be contained within our speech. Hanley offers the following, which may or may not prove useful in our reflection on this Trinity Sunday. He says, think of three primary colours, red, yellow and blue. If you divide a piece of paper into three sections and paint each section on a, a different primary colour and then spin the paper very quickly, it will appear to be white. It's a simple illustration of oneness and threeness. It makes the point that the oneness is dynamic, but it doesn't diminish the three. And in the long struggle to speak about the Christian experience of Israel's God, one of the great insights was that God's oneness is also a unique oneness. It entails and indeed requires the living relationship of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Oneness cannot be thought of without these relationships and vice versa. Trinity then is the very revelation that God is love. It is love loving, dynamic, unfathomable, inexhaustible, eternally complete and creative. The scholar Peter Kreeft said, if God is not a Trinity God, he is not love. Love requires, he says, three things. It requires a lover, it requires a beloved, and it requires a relationship between them. And it's precisely this, this love, this relationship of love, which we see in today's gospel. John talks of the Father and the Son, Interestingly, he doesn't directly mention spirit, but the spirit is in fact present in the action of love. The spirit is present in the words, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And the rest, as we know, is commentary. <laughs>